Well, we begin with politics where earlier in the week, former governor of Lagos, Bola Tunubu, was declared the winner of Nigeria's closest presidential election since the return uh, to uh, democracy in 1999. Tunubu garnered 8.8 .8 million votes, just over a third of the total to defeat his main uh, rival, Atiku Abubakar, of the opposition part, People's Democratic Party. Atiku uh, secured 7 million votes, failing in his sixth attempt to become Nigeria's president. According to the result announced by Mahmoud Yakubu, chair of the Independent National Electric Commission, in third place was Peter Ubi, backed by many of Nigerians' urban and educated middle-class voters. He garnered 6.1 million votes, winning the capital, Abuja, and 11 states, including Tinubu's home state of Lagos. The Independent National Electric Commission on Wednesday presented a certificate of return to the president-elect Bola Tinubu alongside Vice President-elect Kashim Shetima. The presidential came, pres, uh, presentation rather, came a few hours after Tinubu was declared the winner of the Saturday, February 25th poll. Well, joining me to discuss the victory of Tinubu and the events that took place during the uh, polls is Joe Ibukwe, member of, uh, of, of the All Progressive Congress. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Right, let's get straight to the point, Mr. Joe Ibukwe. Now, despite all the odds, you know, that saw Tinubu imagine the president-elect of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, what can you say actually contributed to his victory? Hard work. Mm. You know, following the process. Like I always say, say, if you want to travel out of this country, you must get your BTA, you must have your passport, you must have your visa. If you don't have those three things, you cannot be, you're not supposed to be in the airport. So that project has been almost a 30 years project. It has planned, it has schemed, and it followed the process. Just like one pastor was, you know, as he was preaching this morning, he was talking about following the process and then to succeed. If you have a pregnant woman, you know, she will follow a process for nine months mm. when you deliver. It's not something you can just jump into overnight. You're talking about 36 states of the Federation. South, East, South, West. South, South, not East or Central, not West. You have to traverse the whole political landscape to win. You must have built bridges. You must have built friends across. You must have touched people's lives. You must have raised followers that will do the magic for you. You can see how people all over Nigeria, uh, you know, reaching out to one man. You think it's a day's job. It's not a day's job. It started 20, 25, 30 years ago to plan. So they say you plan. If you don't plan, then you fail. So that is just the magic. It's not an emergency thing, just like, just like I you have been there, you said five times. Still coming, you know. So it's a product of hard work, commitment, you know, knowing what to do. You saw the energy, you saw the movement from one state to another, transverse almost uh, the whole states in Nigeria. Everywhere saying they see, can do, but he became stronger than all of them. Yeah. Campaigned, speaking. So we know he's a master planner. He has track records, you know, from Lagos. He has deep knowledge of what leadership is all about. He has antecedents that you can. He has followers, friends he has built over the years, including myself. So when you put three of them on the table, you know that you're not, the comparison cannot add up. Some of them are just beginners, you know. But he, he knew where he was going right from the one and eventually got it. Not on a platter of gold. You saw the, the actions. You saw the movements. You saw how, how tight the movements were moving into flights, you know, flying all over Nigeria. You know, yeah, I told you it's a phenomenon. 
But I thank God, hard work, you know, over the years pay, paid, you know. He was busy sponsoring people to that office, pushing people to that office, spending money for years. And people thought he was just, you, see, you build your bridges. And when the time comes, people will come, over, come around you and do the work for you. That's what he's playing out today. All right, Joe, let's look at this uh, aspect that APC lost the uh, most, uh, some key states in the country, looking at Lagos, for example. Do you think this electoral pattern will also play out in this upcoming uh, governorship election? You know what played out is? It's religion. Hmm. That was all played out. It's not, there's no structure here in Lagos. It's just religion. Muslim, there was an attack on Muslim, 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 Muslim taken right from the war. That's what we suffered in Lagos. My own people were involved. Yorubas were involved. What other ethnic groups were involved? Because they were spoken to in their churches. That's why you go, you, you win it. Benue, Plateau, you know, Benue, you know, getting a certain number of votes. The Anuna, Nasrawa. It's all about Christianity, you know. How was it? Otherwise, well, okay. it's the structures of the church. Religion played. Actually, we would have run away with about 50 million votes if it's not because of that. But that's Nigeria for you. Oh, they didn't prepare. They didn't prepare. It's just an emergency thing. Religion just played a role. And, you know. It will fizzle out. It's not. It's so, not so, it's so not do you think we are going to see it more in this governorship election? Well, that, this one is out. different. The presidency is not the same thing as governorship. Okay. Yeah. So this one, let's see how it goes. Mm. But I knew that the one for presidency, you know, well, you know, you're optimistic. I'm a, I'm a APC will, will get it back. We get Lagos back. Of course. Of course. You know. This is Lagos. It's not a place you can just bring anybody. We know what we want right from the one. And it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a center of excellence. It's not just people we put in Lagos here, they will just be confused. Uh -huh. So it's not for everybody. Lagos is an exclusive city, you know, that mediocre cannot handle Lagos. You know, you wouldn't know what to do from the one. It will deceive you. You just, just, you just, you just collapse there. You won't be able to do anything. So it's, um, Lagos is not, it's, it's not, it's not where you come to learn how to lead. You know, you would have been in the system. You would have been in the system. Don't go and check out. Fashionable was, the fashionable that succeeded at Chiwaji was, Chiwaji was a senator, you know, before work with mobile. Fashionable, the senior advocate of Nigeria, served as chief of staff, was groomed, trained, to come there. And then Amode was, was, was in the civil service for 27 years. This governor is sitting down, he has been an MD, has been a com MD of uh, um, um, how, you know, Lagos Housing um, you know, Authority. Mm. You know. He has been commissioner for a staff. You know, so, and he has been in the system for years. So uh, he has a lot to bring to the table. He cannot just come from, you know, the, you get to Lausa, you'll be confused. You won't know what to do. So it's not a job for the boys. You're, you're talking about leading a small country. That's what I mean. This, this is the largest economy, almost the fifth largest economy in Africa, moving to Fort. Mm. And it's a 24-hour city. Nobody, nobody that is governing Lagos do have up to three hours sleep every day. Because anything can happen mm -hmm. anytime they'll call you. So those who are dreaming to come, mm, manage yourself very well. Just think about yourself before you. So <laughs> we, we, nobody's playing with Lagos. Mm. All right. Thank you very much so far for your contribution, Joe.